Hey guys and welcome back to another video. So today what we're going to do is, well originally we were going to go ahead and uh, set up custom themes or show you how to install custom themes using the Hex community store. However, it looks like my SD card decided that it's going to break on me, which is just one more thing that we can go ahead and take a look at. So today what we'll do is we'll go ahead and restore a backup that we made. Remember we did a video on setting up automatic backups, a good thing we did because now I'm going to definitely need those. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and take a look at setting that up. There we go. So here's what I did. Um, while we're busy doing this as well, I also decided just doing the whole upgrade process as well. So I did get a Raspberry Pi 4 and um, I know there's a lot of people talking about heat issues, but honestly, you won't really run into that. Um, Home Assistant is not that heavy on system loads, so you should be fine on using a Raspberry Pi 4. So what I did was I decided I'm going to go ahead and upgrade to the Raspberry Pi 4 as well. So the only thing we do is we're going to go through the standard installation of um, installing Home Assistant. So I'm not going to show you guys that. Um, that's fairly simple. I do have a video already showing how to install Home Assistant on a Raspberry Pi 3. The only difference is download the image for the Raspberry Pi 4, the recommended 32-bit one and run the installation and once that has completed I'll go ahead and show you guys how we restore that backup that we already have for our home assistant installation using the same add-on again. So with that said run through the installation real quick and then we can go ahead and take a look. And there we go. So just like that, I have a clean new installation of Home Assistant. Um, I just did the basic setup, we went through that. And um, now all we need to do is we have a few options. Now, if you are upgrading from a older Raspberry Pi or you're upgrading from a different installation, you would be able to just go ahead and download that image from your Raspberry Pi itself before and then restore that image. In my case, I don't have access to the SD card anymore. It decided to no longer work. So I need to go ahead and use that cloud file that uploaded to my Google Drive. Now in there, download the actual file from your Google Drive, or you can just go ahead and re-add that add-on into your Home Assistant installation or it from there. So that's the option I'm going to use. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and click on Supervisor. Remember they changed that name. And then once we're in here, just wait for that to load up. It's the first time that it started. Click on the add-on store right here paste in that new that repository that we used in the previous video click on add that'll go ahead and add that for us here and once the backup has been added if we go down a bit you'll see it is listed right here so we can just click on the google drive backup option and then all we need to do is we just click on install so let's wait for that to quickly install, then we run through the setup, connect our account, and then we would be good. There we go. So that went ahead and installed. So all I'm going to do is going to enable auto update and hit the start. So we'll just go ahead and start the add-on right here. That's it. So just leave it a minute just for it to initialize and load all the information. We can click here, refresh, and you'll see it is busy setting up all the information. And then once that has loaded, we click on the open UI. And the first thing it's going to ask us is to authenticate with Google Drive. So let's quickly do that. Uh, it's gonna flip up my phone. So just click on here. Allow. That's it. So that authenticated us. 
Now we just need to enter in our username and password. Hit next. Wow, okay. If you remember your username and password. So once we logged back in, you'll see it's automatically going to tell us it found an existing folder. We can click on use this folder. It's fine. We definitely want to use that folder. Then it's going to ask us if we want to share the report. I'll just okay, so once we clicked on use this folder, you'll see it takes away that message. The next thing we do is we click on actions right here and click on the upload option right here, which means it, it's going to upload the last snapshot. Um, I'm remember using I'm using the very last one. If I click on upload right here, it's telling me that it's going to upload this file to my home assistant installation. I'm going to say yes, I want to upload that. And that'll take a few minutes for the file to upload. Once the upload has been completed, we can go in and restore that specific snapshot. So we'll wait for that to finish and then we can take a look. That's it. So now that file uploaded to our home assistant or downloaded, um, we just use the upload option because it's currently, it was listed in drive only. So all we did was we clicked on actions, clicked on upload, and that uploaded that to our Raspberry Pi. And now all we need to do is we click on actions right here, and then we click on the restore option. So once we click on restore, <coughs> It'll tell us that restore and snapshot must be re restored through the snapshots page. So all we do is we click on open snapshots and that's just if you go to the supervisor and you click on snapshots, you'll see the snapshot that we just uploaded is listed right here. So all we do is we click on full snapshot, then we click on restore selected. So it's going to go ahead and restore all of our information that we had on there previously. What I'll do is I'll go in and click on restore selected because I do want to restore everything. It's going to ask me, are you sure? I'm going to say, okay. And that'll go in and start restoring that information. So we'll wait for that to finish up and then I'll show you guys the end result. There we go guys, so that went ahead and restored all my information. It looks like we are good to go on here. Um, I will take a look at just to confirm every that everything is in here, but it looks like we should be good to go. Um, I know it may look a bit different than it looked previously. I do have some two additional items in here and the alarm, but we'll get to that in a future video, so I'm not skipping it. It is going to be included. It's just in here while I did my testing. Everything seems to be functioning and being back to normal again. So I'm very glad about that. And that also shows you how to go ahead and upgrade to a Raspberry Pi 4. So that's going to be it for this one. I hope there was some information in there for you guys to use. Or if you do get stuck in the future, maybe you lose an SD card and you do have a backup. Um, I know you can go ahead and just download the file and upload it or copy it directly into your configuration file. But I just showed how to do it through the add-on that we installed previously as well. Now, I know a lot of you are going to say, why don't I use a VM or a Intel NUC like this one right here? Um, the thing for me is, yes, I know it's going to be a lot more powerful or you can use an SSD with your Raspberry Pi and install it on there. I get all that and I understand that it is possible. But the thing for me is, um, or even setting up VMs or running it in a virtual machine or having a dedicated server that runs it, everything, all that information is possible. But the thing for me is uh, Raspberry Pi is very low powered. And I need a way of keeping that running while we have power outages. So in South Africa, we have something called load shedding, where the power just goes out for like two and a half hours. Now, you could go and get some battery backup for that. But so I really want to save as much power as possible. And the Raspberry Pi is the best option in that case. Even if you do set it up on a NAC and run it from a battery backup, the best option and your most power efficient one is still going to be the 
uh, Raspberry Pi 4 and that's why I'm using that instead of anything else. But with that said, I'm going to leave you guys. I hope you have a fantastic rest of your week.